our horse is really, really suffering. There's a lot of critical horses in this load from what we're seeing, but he's the worst. Um, he cannot use his, his leg here. It looks like he is a standard bred, um, so we should be able to find out his history. Um, oh, poor guy. Alright, I got his. He's got a pretty strong cane or something. So this joint is fused. I can bend a little bit this way, but I can't extend this part of the foot out. And this would have taken months and months. There's a huge bony callus right here that's keeping this joint from functioning. This is horse sustained some kind of severe trauma and then the shoulder is completely dropped and you can see a ton of atrophy right here. Um, the radial nerve runs right here in his armpit along with the brachial plexus and when we have severe injury to that radial nerve you have the shoulder drop and you have no um, use of the forelimb and then it's especially hard in horses because they bear 60% of their weight in their front legs. So he's having to try to compensate and hold 60% of his weight on this right front leg. Um, and he's shown a pretty strong pain response on palpation of the left shoulder. He's got a digital pulse in this right foot. A really strong pulse. Um, this horse has an indication of active founder in this support limb which is likely secondary to, normally when we see laminitis, it's a metabolic process, but we can have it um, secondary to having to bear more weight than is necessary and it's very painful. Um, this horse also hasn't had farrier care for, the, his heel bulb should end right here. So this is severe neglect following a, a traumatic injury. And he's been through one auction already and would have been headed on to another one. It's so soft. Um, so they're selling horses at auctions like this in the United States and nobody, nobody cares. Other, I mean, we care obviously, but like nobody's, nobody's at these auctions. Like some, some vet pulled blood on him at the auction being he like. He has a certificate, he has a CVI. Yeah, yeah, he has a health certificate. He's got all these things that, you know, for, for bringing it. It's just really frustrating, it's really frustrating but we're thankful we were able to intercept him from the auction and this is why your donations are so important. This load of horses cost nearly $10,000 just to purchase them. And it's, it's crucial that we are able to, to save horses like this. Like he's super sweet. He's, he's like, at first he didn't want to be caught. He didn't want anything. And now he's just like, he's not sedated. He's just like loving the chance to be loved. Yes, I know. That horse's heart rate was 68, which indicates pretty severe pain, so I'm going to give some IV pain medication. Upper end of normal is in the upper 30s for horses, so an elevated heart rate is one of our best indicators of pain. This horse is very painful, and I'm going to give him some intravenous pain medication that's going to kick in really quickly. The last act of kindness will be our only option for him. Um, and it's, it's something that is a gift when, when it's horses like this, like they are suffering so much and we can relieve that suffering from them. And without us, he would have gone on to slaughter. And there are some folks that are like, well, horses should be slaughtered. Like when I was in Washington DC last time, they're like, I am pro slaughter, but I'm against abuse. This is out of the slaughter pipeline. This horse is, is suffering. Abuse and the slaughter pipeline go hand in hand. B twenty four ninety. Okay. I tried to figure it out. It should be. It felt like a bone to me. Oh, he's beautiful. 
Um, I would age him between five and seven. So young. I know. Wow. So he's five or seven years old. Um, and he does have a brand, so we can verify that, but he is not. I'm probably going to put him in a stall just for a second uh, while the next trailer unloads, but he is a high priority for us for the last act of kindness to, because he is, he's, his pain levels are very high. Hey buddy. We are going to give him the last act of kindness. Uh, he's had lots of pain medicine on board. He's also sedated. He's so painful that we don't want to do x-rays while he's alive, so uh, his x-rays will be taken uh, after he is gone just to document his damage um, and this t just torture he's gone through. Sorry, buddy. We don't have complete collapse or arthrodesis of these joints, but you can see the horse's leg should be a bony column that's lined up. So see how this area isn't lined up with this area? So we almost have like a, a subluxation in this direction. And that is probably because this horse has been trying to kind of walk and knuckling over on that what? leg right there. Um, when arthrodesis occurs and a bony callus forms, you actually have more stability and less pain. In these cases where we have really severe um, misalignment, you end up with kind of bone grating on bone. So this poor horse, when you felt when you felt this area and when I tried to move this joint, we couldn't move this joint forward. So we know that we didn't have a functional synovial structure in place, but we don't have a bony callus formed yet. So I would put that horse's radial nerve injury at probably um, six to nine months before now that he's been walking around painful on that leg. And he was really young, so. Yeah. It's really sad. Young and super sweet, very beautiful, well-behaved horse. Um, this is a case where radial nerve paralysis isn't correctable. So in dogs, we can amputate the limb. In horses with a forelimb, we really can't support that animal. And then we end up with the support limb failing. He was putting, pressure where pressure shouldn't have gone and he probably had really severe pain um, here and here, um, this poor guy.